morning children in today's class we are going to learn about statistical inference what is statistical inference first of all what do, what do you mean by the word inference to draw conclusions what do we infer about what do you understand from this this we call inference as we analyze the sample statistic we try to infer about the population parameter so to draw inferences about a population from the analysis of samples is called statistical inference there are two main classifications estimation and testing of hypothesis estimation the very word tells me we try to estimate about we have to be familiar with certain words estimation estimator estimate what do these words mean estimation the same sentence we use only the word slightly we have to alter what is estimation the process or the method used to obtain the most likely value of the parameter using the statistic so using the sample we try to infer about the population population constant i say parameter sample constant i say statistic so using the statistic i try to find the most likely value of the parameter the method i call estimation the method or the process i call estimation the statistic the sample constant we call estimator and the value of the statistic we call estimate the specific observed value of the statistic we call estimate now when i say the statistic is an estimator definitely we need to say what are the characteristics of a good estimator four ideas we would like to say number 1 unbiasedness 2 consistency 3 efficiency and 4 sufficiency what do you mean by this word unbiasedness i say an estimator to be a very good estimator if expected value of the statistic should give me the population parameter if expected value of the statistic gives me the population parameter then i can say the estimator is unbiased the second idea consistency when do you say the estimator to be consistent there may be many values say t1 t2 t3 as we discussed earlier as time passes that is when n tends to infinity the estimator should naturally converge to the parameter when n tends to infinity the estimator converges to the parameter then we say the estimator is consistent the third idea we say efficient efficiency when is the estimator said to be more efficient there is a good estimator there is some other estimator also find out variance of the good estimator find out the variance of the other estimator also then check the ratio variance of the good estimator divided by variance of any other estimator we term as e capital e this value should be below unity so e value should be less than or equal to 1 and so i will call the estimator to be efficient variance of the good estimator divided by variance of any other estimator should not exceed 1 or i will say e value should be below or equal to 1 at the maximum sufficiency sufficiency tells us 
the estimator should be independent of the parameter so the statistic is independent of the parameter the sample statistic which we call estimator is independent of the population parameter then we will say the estimator is sufficient the estimator which is satisfying all the four unbiasedness efficiency sufficiency consistency all the four if it follows then we can term the estimator to be a good estimator now we go on to the next topic say estimate how all it could be what is estimate actually value specified value of the statistic how it could be i can say x bar is equal to 10 that will tell me what is mu value x bar is for sample mu is for population so as i say one value i call it point estimate so the word point estimate tells it is a single value that represents now certain cases telling exactly one value is difficult in that case i can say some interval it may be from 10.252 10.45 i'm not telling exactly 10 instead i say two values the lower limit can be 10.25 the upper limit can be 10.45 so from 10.25 to 10.45 when i say it is an interval when i say from and to the minimum value the maximum value is called confidence interval how to find out that confidence interval Confidence interval is available for various statistic, but we are doing only for sample mean. What is the formula x bar plus or minus z alpha by 2 into sigma by root n. Remember sigma by root n is the standard error of mean. Certain problems, they may directly give you standard error of mean. So instead of this, I can also use standard error of mean. X bar is the sample mean. Sigma by root 10 is the standard error of mean. Or sigma I will say population standard deviation. N is the sample size. So about this when we do the problems we will see detail. There are various confidence limits given in our syllabus. So you can refer to your textbook. We have a population and we have selected samples on the basis of sample whose size is already fixed. We have certain calculations. We propose something for the population parameter. But there is a situation of uncertainty on the basis of the sample. In that case, statistics gives us a criterion to arrive at a decision regarding the parameter. So this technique of arriving at a decision in cases of uncertainty, we are giving a region in which we can accept it or reject it. That is called hypothesis testing. So this topic we are going to discuss about hypothesis testing. Hypothesis testing in short, we can say statistical decision making. Hypothesis. What does this word mean? Statistical hypothesis is just a statement or I can say it is an assumption. See, I can assume mu equal to mu naught. I can assume mu is not equal to mu naught. So, we assume that is called hypothesis. We have two types of hypothesis, null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis. The word null hypothesis we denote as H0. Alternate hypothesis we denote as H1. What is this null hypothesis? We always say H0 mu equals mu0. See we put colon. H0 is a statement mu equal to mu naught. 
Now, what is this null hypothesis to put it in words? It is tested for possible rejection. Null hypothesis is a hypothesis which is tested for possible rejection under the assumption that it is true. So, when we are doing problems, as I state H0, mu equal to mu0, I will say is true. So, we assume the statement is true. But, we check whether I can accept H0 or I reject H0. So, this we call null hypothesis. Then what is alternate? The word itself tells me it is complement to null hypothesis. So, alternate hypothesis we denote as H1. Here I say mu equals to mu naught. Here I can say it in three ways. I can say mu not equal to mu naught or I can say mu greater than mu naught or I can say mu less than mu naught. All these things we call alternate hypothesis. In words, I can say alternate hypothesis is a hypothesis complementary to the null hypothesis. Just a complement, the reverse of it. Here I say yes, there I will say no. That is the idea. The next thing, in hypothesis testing also, there will be some errors. So we define two types of errors. What will be the two types of errors? H0 may be true, but I may reject it. That is wrong. Something that is true, we have to accept. But true, I am rejecting. Or in other words, H0 may be false, but I will accept it. That is also wrong. When H0 is false, I have to reject it. When H0 is true, I have to accept it. We do the other way. It becomes an error. So, we have the two errors called type 1 error and type 2 error. What is type 1 error? Rejecting H0 when it is true. What is type 2 error then? Accepting H0 when it is false. This type 1 error, if I find the probability, probability of type 1 error we call alphas. So, alpha we call level of significance. What is alpha? We say the level of significance. How do I define it? Probability of type 1 error is called alpha. Now, how to proceed with the exercise problems? In the exercise problems, as I read out, try to find out what is x bar, the sample mean. What is sigma, the population standard deviation? If it is not given, you go with sample standard deviation. Then n, the sample size. Then mu, the population mean. So sample mean x bar, population mean mu. Sample size small n, population size may be given or may not be given also. Then we calculate z. What is z? x bar minus mu by standard error. What is standard error of me? Sigma by root n. So, x bar minus mu by standard error. That is sigma by root n. The value is below z alpha by 2. We will be given some percentages. 1%, 5%, all that. We should be familiar with the values. So, at 1%, we say 2.58%. At 5%, we say 1.96. So, the calculated value of Z is below that Z alpha by 2 except H0. If it is above or equal to Z alpha by 2, reject H0. So, this is hypothesis testing. Checking whether I can accept H0 or I can reject H0. Now, this accept reject tells us there are regions. Acceptance region, rejection region. What do you mean by the word critical region? The word critical region is nothing but region of rejection. What is that region of rejection? The word itself suggests how I must write it. It is the region corresponding to the test statistic, the sample space, the value which tends to rejection of H0. So, 
rejection region the word itself suggests how to frame it it is the region where h not is tending to be rejected the rejection region of the test statistic in the sample space where we tend to reject h not is called rejection region or in other words critical region is there other region yes whenever i have rejection region i will naturally have the acceptance region what is acceptance region complementary to the rejection region i have acceptance region now this is acceptance region this is rejection region so there is a border line that which separates the value of the statistic that separates acceptance region and rejection region is called critical value so what is critical value critical value is the value of the statistic that separates acceptance region and critical region so these are some of the important theory questions so go through your textbook and learn these words and definitions merits and demerits and some errors go through your book and be thorough with it this year we will get theory questions in the exam so concentrate more in theory also